Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Closet. My name is Kevin and tonight I'm going to be doing a first impressions tasting of a new to me bourbon. This is an Old Elk bourbon. It is a port cask finished Old Elk. The story behind this was it is an OHLQ 2022 uh, pick, I guess, from the state of Ohio. Uh, this is barrel number four. Ohio did a, a, a funny event. It was called Single Barrel Saturday, where they had a bunch of different, mostly single barrel products that they released at select liquor stores throughout the state. And you could go out there and try to pick those up. And this was one of those offerings. Um, Old Elk is one that's been on my wish list for a long time, so I was happy to pick this up. Let's give it a try and see how it is. All right, here we go. First impressions on the nose. Oh, wow. It seems very sweet, lots of caramel. Oh, there's like a red fruits kind of vibe happening too. Nice, that's a nice nose. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking port cask, but there is kind of on top of those notes, there is a, a little bit of a red wine kind of tanniny sort of smell to it, which is which is kind of interesting, but it's like really, really high up off in the distance. Oh, actually it was a little more predominant that time. I wonder if the more time I spend with it, if I'm gonna start picking up more and more on that red winey kind of character. I, this, it smells really nice. There's an astringency there too. You know, it's just the, maybe the alcohol is just kind of jumping out a little bit. It's bringing a little bit of a magic marker kind of character, a little chemical-y, but there's so much sweetness in it and that caramel kind of thing. And then also those red kind of fruits that it's nice. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Mmm. Wow. It's making my eyes water. The proof really grabbed me. I'm surprised. 113 is a nice, respectable proof point, but it really drank hot that first sip. Oh yeah, see, I love when you taste something and then the nose changes. I wonder if that has to do with some of that retro nasal kind of action where you start to really pick up on different notes after you've swallowed it and it coated your throat and everything. Cause that red wine tannin character is jumping out a lot more. A little bit of a raisin note too, actually. In fact, that's, huh, that astringent note that I was describing is kind of magic marker -y. I wonder if that's a little bit more, or maybe just that note is leading into the raisin note. Again, maybe I'm just looking for those kinds of notes because I know it's port finished, but it does seem like it's got something extra happening. Oh, wow. There's a lot of oak impact too. That is quite interesting. It's finishing with this kind of vanilla and oak and a hint of kind of a dry tanniny character. It's got a pretty long finish on it too. It just keeps kind of, it's kind of drying and just keeps kind of getting more and more, not bitter, but dry, that kind of a little bit of astringency thing. But I feel like it's that vanilla character that's added onto that finish that's balancing that pretty nicely. Oh, wow. That's hard to, it's hard to describe. It opens with this sweetness that now is kind of, I don't know why, it's kind of making me think like golden raisins. Then it very quickly transitions, you get the proof, uh, which isn't hitting me as strong as the first sip anymore, which is nice. Um, but that proof happens and the proof fades into those finished notes that I was mentioning where you're getting some of that barrel impact, some of that kind of vanilla character coupled to it, a little bit of the tanniny kinds of things. It's very different and it's very interesting and it is nice. Uh, it's not like, I'm not like falling in love with this, but I do like it. Well, there's some first impressions on the Old Elk. Old Elk is a port cask finish in this case. Let's try it against a couple of other finished bourbons and see what happens. When you think port finish, you pretty much think Angel's Envy. So let's try it against the Angel's Envy. All right, if you've watched the channel before, you know that I'm no good at figuring out what's in the glass. And so I try to always start just by picking a preference, appreciating what I'm tasting, try to pick out some notes just in a way that's helpful, and then see if I can pick a favorite. And then after that, maybe wager a guess at what it might be that I'm tasting. So let's dive into this glass here. Smells very light. It has that kind of 
raisiny, tanniny thing going on in it, I think. Balsa woody kind of something. I want to say some kind of red fruit action. Oh, that's got to be the angel's envy. The nose smells really nice. And then the palate is just weak, watery, and bitter. Oh, yeah, the finish is just so strangely bitter. I didn't enjoy that sip at all. The finish ruins it for me. It starts with a nice kind of quality. There's an interesting, almost honey kind of quality to the mouthfeel. Kind of bland, maybe a little kind of like a vanilla, almost like a powdered sugar sort of sweetness. Then the finish, I don't, the finish is just that harshness, kind of bitter. Let's try the second glass. Wow, <laughs> that nose is so much richer immediately. Deep, dark richness. Oh, baking spices, beautiful. Wow, strange, the contrast between the two. Somehow this is now starting to remind me of the Angel's Envy rye of all things which was in my uh, Christmas whiskey video. It's got some very interesting um, baking notes and kind of brown or, or uh, bread pudding notes. And I don't know, the nose is really, really interesting. Oh, wow. Huh, the proof hit me again really fast. It does drink hot. Fascinating. This finish is more harsh tannin and bitter than the first glass did, but it has so much more complexity and spice and sweetness that the fact that it's finishing that way doesn't bother me. Whereas in the first glass, that finish was just the most predominant flavor and so I didn't enjoy it. Glass B has gotta be the old elk and it is, which means that, uh, glass B, yes. Which means that glass A is of course the angel's envy. I don't know why I'm gonna look, there's only two, but yes, it's the angel's envy. Okay, I'm back. We're having some technical difficulties tonight. I think that I forgot to plug the microphone in at the beginning of this. Also, the lights went out again. Sorry about that, but we're back with the lights back on, with the microphone plugged in and more bourbon. So I got rid of the Angel's Envy because we don't need that garbage in this flight. And I added three more finished bourbons. These are not port finished. They're just finished. So the bourbons that we have in this lineup now are, of course, the Old Elk Port Finish. That's the bourbon of the night. And to that, I have added the uh, Jefferson's Reserve Pritchard Hill Cabernet Cask Finish. So this is a wine finish. And the uh, Rabbit Hole Derringer right here. This is finished in PX Sherry Casks. And then finally, the Joseph Magnus. Uh, this one is probably the biggest stretch to put in this lineup because it is very, very unique and different and I'd be shocked if it doesn't super stand out. Um, this is a triple cask finished bourbon. It is a straight bourbon whiskey finished in sherry and cognac casks. It's finished in two different sherry casks and a third cognac cask. That's the Joseph Magnus. Okay. Now, as usual, I'm gonna just try to taste through these, experience what's in the glass, give some tasting notes maybe, and try to find a preference. And then after that, maybe we'll experiment with guessing what we're tasting. That has a very interesting, almost maybe sour kind of flavor. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that is so weird. Oh, it tastes like Oh, it tastes like wine gone bad or something. Like, yeah, it, I'm still, even on the palate, it's kind of sour. Sour isn't quite the right word. It's a little puckering. It's got like an old kind of raisiny wine character a little bit. Not in a positive way, though. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's so bad. It's got to be the Jefferson's Cabernet Cask finish. Oh, man, that is... Whew. That is, I've got to drink, clear, clear my palate with some water after that. Yikes. Okay, now that smells very nice. Beautiful, actually. Little of that kind of magic marker thing. Oh. Oh, wow. Huh. That is, huh. Interesting. It starts with a really nice sweetness. A kind of a hard to describe sweetness, and then it, 
let's try again. Wow. Yeah, it's this very, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting almost like when you add like uh, raspberries and blackberries on top of pancakes and you sprinkle them with powdered sugar, something in that kind of realm at the very beginning. It's got a little bit of that raisiny character that happens through the whole thing too, but it goes into this barrel drying impact very quickly right in the middle of the palette and then it that's lingers that grows and blooms through it and then lingers for a long time a surprising amount of barrel wow that's really that's interesting that's nice all right let's move on okay now this i'm getting <laughs> like uh leather and tobacco well hold on let me not jump into that yet that's really what leaped out at me at first but then the second smell, it was just getting a little more berries. Interesting, again, with that kind of magic marker character, there's something in that like alcoholic astringent nose that's coming off of these. Nice, okay. Ooh, hmm, wow, that is drenched in this really interesting berried astringence and sweetness, this interesting coupling of flavors there. The final flavor in the finish is a strange, harsh, yeah, like kind of a lot of a leather kind of, maybe? That's what jumped out at me on the nose for a sec, and then I'm not getting that anymore. And the, I don't know. That's a head scratcher. Tricky. A little weird, a little off profile. Different. Some sour notes, too. Okay, last but not least. Wow. Some beautiful baking spices on this nose. A little of a red wine kind of tanniny character above it. Ooh. Proofy. Oh, there's a lot of bite on that. There's a, it, <laughs> it teases you with a little bit of sweetness and then it slaps you with the bite. Ooh, and then it, the bite transitions into the finish and it's getting, it's like a little sparkly and kind of lively on the tongue. And the finish stays that way and it goes for a long time. Wow, of the set, that is the most surprising. Nice with the nose, baking spices, that little hint of a wine kind of something. Once you know what you're in for, you can appreciate it more, but it's aggressive. It's got bite, it's got spice, it's got drying impact, really boom, sucking all that moisture out of the cheeks, <laughs> which ironically makes your mouth water. Savory mm, and long finish. You have to find a preference. It's not actually obvious to me right away what my preference would be. Certainly this last glass was the most surprising, but it's so aggressive that I wonder if maybe it isn't my favorite, which brings me back to these first two, since obviously the first one was awful. <laughs> Let me try to work backwards around the circle and see if that helps. Oh, the nose on the third glass is so nice. You really, the leathers and things really jump out of the nose and they balance the sweetness really well. And then the nose on number four has more red wine impact, but it has, and more baking spice than the leather. Maybe kind of a little bit of kind of, of like an orange rind sort of thing happening too, kind of a citrus pop. Well, that's good, but it's so aggressive. I'm gonna say four over three. I like the flavors that are happening in four better. So I think we're down to between four versus two. These seem very different too. There's so much barrel in that and it gets really dry. The sweetness is up front and there's very interesting kind of dark raisiny flavors up front. Dark, dark red fruits, dark raisin, something like that are interesting. And the, um, the barrel impact is paired with that nicely. It just goes a little long to where the sweetness gets left out. Okay, I'm gonna say it's a tough call these three are so different and there's a lot in each of them that I really enjoy. But just overall, I'm thinking that number four is kind of my preference generally. And then probably if I'm ranking them, I'm going four and then two and then three and obviously one, just knock it off the table, that was garbage. All right, let's find out what they were and we'll go in reverse order. So number one, which I hated, is I think Jefferson's, the uh, Cabernet cask finish. It is. Uh, okay, so then let's go to number three, which I ranked as the next one, which I'm thinking this is the Joseph Magnus, all that leather in it. Oh, this is the rabbit hole. So now I'm gonna switch. Let's go to the thing that I thought was the winner. I think this is the old elk. And it is. 
So my favorite tonight was the Old Elk, which means that my runner-up was actually the Joseph Magnus. I'm actually really surprised at that. If you had asked me to describe the Joseph Magnus, I would have said that it was harshly bitter and like super, super strong leather tobacco notes. But drinking it tonight, it seemed a little more rounded. It still had some of that, that drying finish, but it didn't have a lot of the leather that I seem to remember it having. <laughs> you know, classic, right? Now that I know what it is and I stick my nose in there, I'm just getting leather for days. Yeah, it's sweeter than I remember. It fades into those, those barrels better than I remember. Yeah. That deserves to be number two tonight. Well, that was really, really interesting. But man, the old elk won the tasting. I mean, a little bit. I think just like on, on sort of profile preference more than like a true heads up, which one's the best. But really nice. This has been a first impressions tasting of the old elk port cask finish. OHLQ 2022 barrel number four. If uh, you participated in single barrel Saturday, uh, let me know in the comments if you picked up an old elk and what you thought of it. If it was the same as mine or one of the other ones, let me know. I'd love to hear. Uh, this has been another episode of the Whiskey Closet. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.